the Oh, Jets. man, this is life-changing. You know, I, I was young. I, I got drafted in 06, and by the time I got released, I was I was still a young buck at 21. And first year in Sussex, I was over with Ed. And, uh, you know, it was tough getting used to the indie ball thing. And when I got to Jersey, you know, I really felt at home. You know, I had a lot of help from from Isaac, you know, and uh, and Ed and Joe, and everyone made me feel at home and be able, able to relax and kind of figure out what kind of player I was. And, and I honestly, I, those are the years that's helped my career. I wouldn't be playing today if, if I didn't have the opportunity over in New Jersey. I mean, uh, all of us, man. I mean, each year it's kind of changed from dugout to dugout. And I played with Guzman for a long time and played with Sabatella for a long time. And like I said, Isaac's, I mean, he's my best friend. I call him every day. So as far as the locker room stuff, everybody knew what they had to do. We had fun. We kept it loose. Uh, everybody has their own routine. You know, nobody really stepped on anybody's toes in that locker room. And I think the main thing was having fun, knowing how to get your work in and really handle business on the field. And, and when you have everybody clicking together like we had over the years, it, it, it makes for a fun time. Honestly, it would probably be playing NHL 03. Uh, you know, for a couple <laughs> years we had uh, BP. You know, I don't even think anybody thought about BP. We were waiting to get inside, play PlayStation 2, and, and get the NHL thing going on. We had a lot of uh, we had brackets and whiteboards and rankings going on. So with me and Pavlik, and at the time it was Jeff Gogol and Chris Henderson and Carbio and Andrew Barroa, like we had everybody by the end of the year getting involved in that. And I think uh, just just kind of meeting new guys and being able to crack jokes and go through the whole thing has always been the most fun to me. But I, I think what sticks out is. That year we were playing NHL, we had a whole locker room going on and a whole thing, and that was, that was a great time. Who's better at NHL, you or Isaac? Oh, obviously me. Yeah, that's not even, that's not even close. Yeah, that's not even close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. When it comes to, when we talk about it, it, it still hurts. I mean, honestly, I, me and Padgett, when we were down on Laredo, we've talked about it in Sabatella and Isaac, and even when I got here, I talked to Boucher about it. Uh -huh. But, uh, I mean, we were so close. We battled back. We had a great team that year. Uh, for me personally, I had a great series, you know, but I think ultimately the entire team clicked in that series. Being down 3-1 to be able to battle back like that is something that you'll never forget. You know, we didn't come out on, on the side that we wanted, but to come back 3-1 and have an opportunity to be up, you know, in Quebec, be up 5 nothing in the second or third inning is something that, you know, we just kind of dream of it because the two years previous we had lost and we didn't really give ourselves an opportunity. Yeah. But I, you know what, there's months, everyone, you know, a couple months go by and then randomly I'll get a text here and there and I'll text Sabatella or somebody on that team and, and we'll go off on it and, and just, it's hard to talk about but it's fun to talk about because it's a memory, you know, yeah. and you're not playing with these guys anymore and you want to be able to keep those memories in the book. So. Oh, he's a great person, man. He, he means he means so much to me and, and my career, and, and, and you know he's like family to me. And the stuff off the field is even better than on the field. You know he he has a warm heart. He cares a lot about every single player on that field. And uh, in the off season, I've been able to call and keep in touch. And when I was over in Kansas City, I was able to call and ask for help. And and Joe will always be somebody that's always close to me. Oh my goodness, man! I don't even know. Honestly, I hope I, I just make solid contact, put it in play. You know, uh, Isaac's such a good pitcher. I faced him. It's been five years, I think, since I faced him, and I think I, I the last time I really faced him was in a live BP, just messing around. Uh -huh. But uh, man, he's such a good pitcher, and he's such a good friend of mine. But you know, I think if we got in there, it'd be fun, and I would hope that I would get a pitch and I could take him deep over that scoreboard, you know, uh -huh. and then and then give him a little smile and give him a little smirk. But I know he'd want to strike me out too. But I think it'd be a competitive battle, man. It'd be a fun time. To have, but at the same time, just getting your work in, being professional, and honestly, just put the ball in play off of him. He's got so many pitches, it's hard to pick one out and try and take a good swing off him. Your favorite movie? Coming to America. Favorite TV show? Ooh. Seinfeld and King of Queens. I'm putting two in there. Okay. Uh, if you can have dinner with three MLB players, past or present, who would they be? Oh boy. Uh, one, Derek Jeter. You know, I grew up watching Derek Jeter a lot. Uh, shoot, man, there's so many there's so many guys out there. Uh, right now, I would say for myself, because I'm trying to learn off of guys, it would be Derek Jeter, Jose Batista, and I would have to say, jeez. Oh, man. These are tough questions, man. Yeah, oh, Bernie Williams. I'd love to sit down and chat with Bernie Williams. He's always one of my favorite players growing up. So, Bernie Williams, Batista... 
and Derek Jeter. Favorite vacation spot? Oh man, favorite vacation spot. I always wanted to go to Australia, so I would have to say that. I haven't been there yet. <laughs> favorite hobby outside of baseball? Talking with Isaac. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the phone with him every day, just quoting stuff, doing basketball announcing is always fun. Favorite baseball memory? Favorite baseball memory, I have to say, oh man, getting drafted, you know, I mean, it's always, uh, you know, you don't, not many people get to say that they're able to get drafted and get an opportunity to play pro baseball, so I would have to go with the draft. And the hardest pitcher you faced? I faced Clayton Kershaw my first year. Wow. That was our first year, but uh, that's somebody, I, I, you know, I had a couple of bats off him, and, and uh, man, uh, I can remember all the pitches he threw to me. That's how that's how good he was. It was like PlayStation, so mm -hmm. Kershaw for sure. All right. And uh, lastly, what uh, any words you have to say to the Jackal Nation that will be watching this? Oh, man, just, uh, you know, I, I miss you guys out there. I had a great time in New Jersey, and I uh, appreciate the fan support always. And uh, hopefully one day we can reconnect, and whether it's me here in Ottawa or somewhere else. But, uh, you know, keep, keep, keep supporting, and I appreciate it. And hopefully you guys tune in tonight and watch again.